All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Chris Peters. Just before we get started, I'm going to kick things off with a, uh, a little video here for us. Here's to the adventurers, the brave, the proud malcontents. Those who prefer to follow their hearts, not hashtags. For this free-spirited set, seeing is believing. So is touching, smelling, hearing, and tasting. Hear when you dance, when you sing, when you be you. Burnaby comes alive and shines as bright as the fire you bring. In these parts, you can be anything by being open to everything. Welcome to Diverse City. Welcome to Burnaby. There we go. Good morning, everyone. I'm hoping everyone can hear me this morning. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Chris Peters, and I'm the Executive Director for Tourism Burnaby. And uh, this morning, I'm broadcasting to you from high up above uh, Kingsway at the Tourism Burnaby offices here in Burnaby. Um, just before, oops, just before we get started, I had a couple of things I wanted to uh, go through here. So. Before we start, I would uh, like to take a moment to recognize we are on the ancestral and unceded homelands of the Honkaminam and Squamish speaking peoples and to extend appreciation for the opportunity to hold a meeting on this shared territory. A few housekeeping notes for the general session. Attendees will be muted, but feel free to type questions in the comment box and we will address during the conference time permitting. We will follow up with those answers when we send the follow up survey next week and if we're unable to answer them during the session. We will absolutely need your smartphones for in between the sessions, and we'll be playing some really fun quiz games, and there's gonna be some great prizes. So you're gonna wanna keep those handy. And uh, of course, uh, for those of you with a little bit of FOMO, uh, all of the uh, sessions will be recorded. So if you miss the session that you wanted to be at, you'll be able to see that a little bit later on. Um, one last thing before we get started, I, I just wanted to say thank you to our board members and the staff of Tourism Burnaby. 2020 has been a difficult year and these dedicated individuals have developed creative solutions to so many of the challenges that we face each day. It is through their hard work that we're able to maintain our commitments to our stakeholders and plan for a brighter future. And we're very fortunate this morning to have a special message from Mayor Mike Hurley. I hope that most of you had the opportunity to see Mayor early speak at the State of the City luncheon a few weeks ago. It's inspiring to see the work that's been done to tackle homeless, homelessness in the community, provide services to those residents in need, and the progress made as Burnaby commits to being carbon neutral by 2050. Mayor, council, and city staff have been amazing partners and supporters of tourism Burnaby and our stakeholders as the industry faces its largest challenges in generations. We are very pleased that support continues today. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, play the message from Mayor Hurley. Hello, everyone, and thank you to Tourism Burnaby for inviting me to share a few words today. Tourism Burnaby is a valued partner for us at the city, and I think it's fantastic that they've brought all of us together in this way. I am impressed by how you continue to forge ahead in what has been an incredible trying time. As a city, we want to help you bounce back as quickly as possible and see you thrive when people are traveling again. This month, the city completed phase two of our careful restart. People can now swim at our pools, go to fitness classes and work out at our rec centers attend arts classes at the Shad Bowl Center, and visit Burnaby Village Museum and the Burnaby Art Gallery. 
We will have more to come in September. Meantime, our active sidewalks open businesses program lets businesses temporarily expand their operating space so they can accommodate physical distancing while boosting their bottom line. I'm happy to say many are jumping on board. The city will continue to work with partners like Tourism Burnaby, the Board of Trade, our post-secondary institutions, sports groups, and our BIAs as we explore new opportunities to ensure all of you have a successful restart. We will get through this. Enjoy the conference, take care, and stay healthy. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor Hurley. Uh, so once again, thank you for joining us today at our very first virtual conference, Together. We chose Together as our theme for several different reasons. This is the first time this year that we've gathered our stakeholders for Tourism Burnaby together for a single event. Ironically, though we're all social distancing, we're working together across organizations more than we ever have in the past. And finally, we continue to plan out our strategies for a healthy visitor economy here in Burnaby. And we want to work on a plan that is inclusive for stakeholders because of course, we're all in this together. The sessions today fall into three categories and you'll be able to choose your own adventure as we go. The first category is presentation, like the opening and closing sessions where we'll be providing high level information. Those are shown in orange here. The second category is more strategic and interactive. So we'll be going into a deeper dive in some initiatives and we invite some Q and A so you can understand what opportunities Tourism Burnaby sees for the future and how you can understand those that interest you better. Those are shown in red here on the screen. The final category, which honestly I'm most excited about are more like a focus group. Our facilitators will be asking questions to find out what you want to see in the future. It's our time to listen. And those are shown in pink. In between all this, we've got some fun games and factoids to share with you because if you're like me, I can't just stare at talking heads and slides on screens for the next three hours. So we want to make it kind of fun and worthwhile as well. We've allowed about 10 minutes between sessions so you can play the trivia games, check your email, grab a snack or whatever you need to do in that time. Now, since we've got a wide range of stakeholders on the call today, I just want to give you a quick overview of Tourism Burnaby's vision, mission and metrics. Tourism Burnaby is a destination marketing organization that is funded by a 2% hotel tax called the MRDT, or Municipal Regional District Tax. The tax is collected by hotels and short-term accommodations providers and can be used by its designated recipient, in this case, Tourism Burnaby, to fund marketing efforts to bring visitors to its community. Our vision here is to market Burnaby to the world and foster the creation of events, venues and experiences within the city. Our mission is to promote sustainable, profitable tourism growth in Burnaby. These goals and objectives taken from our five-year plan show that we had intended to grow our MRDT by an average of 6% per year between 2019 and 2024, increase overnight visits to Burnaby by a thousand room nights per year, and increase awareness of Burnaby by tripling online interaction by 2024. As we can see, the first two objectives are challenging, if not impossible, given the current conditions. So we've pivoted this year to focus on things that are in our control. In the next few slides, I'll share some of the activities we've executed and others that are planned for the balance of the year. First, some work has already been completed, but we continue with planned website additions to demonstrate to visitors what there is to do in and around Burnaby during COVID. Not just what they can expect in terms of safety protocols, but some inspiration to visit local businesses and attractions. We will be conducting digital and print advertising throughout the province this summer and have already done so to promote partner offers and our Burnaby itineraries. Messaging will be around reserving a stay, the safety of Burnaby and available activities. We continue support to support the Discover Burnaby Guide by Glacier Media. Also this summer, Destination British Columbia has worked with local media partners to offer highly discounted advertising 
both digital and traditional print that we've opted into, uh, both on our own and with some partners. And we have uh, launched road trip and day trip itineraries in collaboration with other DMOs or destination marketing organizations throughout the lower mainland. And this has been promoted on the Daily Hive and through our collective social media channels. So some wonderful collaboration going on as we all help one another out these days. Uh, our social media presence has been on point this year as we've pivoted to, sp uh, to spending 100% of our time trying to attract visitors from outside Burnaby to spending a lot of our time helping residents and stakeholders within the city of Burnaby. I have our second quarter results here on the page, but we've increased our online engagement by more than 30% this year overall, which was our annual goal. And we're only in August. I just wanted to mention some of our special projects as well. Uh, with Burnaby Pride, we worked with them providing social media help and online platforms. We provided a social content plan and we curated content and designed advertising material. With other DMOs around the Fraser Valley, we worked with them to plan itineraries and worked with our partners to gather and shoot content. In terms of content <clears throat> curation in a general sense, this involves continuous research, brainstorming and planning to come up with inspiring daily content across all platforms and community management as well. Uh, blogs, uh, we do plug, publish a regular blog uh, with information ranging anywhere from biking to cherry blossoms to Father's Day to Burnaby restaurants, perfect picnic spots, all those sorts of things. Again, just to give visitors a better idea of all the wonderful things Burnaby has to offer. And last but certainly not least is our weekly Thursday trivia. So this started 14 weeks ago and uh, it's every Thursday evening on uh, Instagram that we play this. And uh, we've had uh, nearly 2,600 people participate so far. And this just kind of uh, continues to grow. So some exciting news there. Uh, moving right to sport. Sport has traditionally been sort of the, the bread and butter for uh, tourism Burnaby. Um, and we do continue to see some strength and some, uh, some green shoots there. Uh, we are seeing some RFPs coming through for 2020 and 2021. Uh, BC has been able to demonstrate that we are one of the safest destinations globally right now, and both national and international events are taking notice. Jennifer from our team serves as a liaison between the provincial sport bodies and local sport organizations as we prepare for a return to sport both during and post-COVID. On the meetings and events side, Seth has been working with local stakeholders and meeting planners to develop a weekly and bi-weekly social hour via Zoom where we can explore the issues of the day. This social hour has evolved to include hybrid events with attendees in person and online during the same event and has many organizations taking notice. Remember to join Seth's session after this to discuss the restart of meetings and events if that's of interest to you. Here are some great photos that we snapped at the first hybrid event held last month in the newly renovated Hilton Ballroom. It included a panel discussion followed by a wine tasting for those in the room anyway, though I do suspect uh, some of the online attendees might have enjoyed a glass or two as well while watching the proceedings. This is very cool. This is a product we are creating to help position Burnaby as a safe destination for meetings, events, and sports. Basically, it's a microsite and some supporting PDFs and imagery to demonstrate how the city, its hotels and venues have adapted to maintain the safety of visitors. We promote this on our social media channels and also in our conversations with meeting planners. Many tournament organizations and event planners don't know what to expect when reviewing destinations, especially right now for their program. We wanted to put everything in one place and provide all the information centrally so that we're not needing to send these folks to five different websites to get all of the information they need to make a decision. And that decision should be to choose Burnaby for their event or tournament. Now we realized that our partners did not have the financial or human resources currently to create these items. So we are creating this full solution under the Stay Safe and Burnaby brand. The program is 80% complete and we expect to have this uh, up and running by the end of August. Uh, this is kind of a fun one. So we've been asked by many locals where they can get some sweet, sweet, sweet Burnaby swag to show off their civic pride. And we realized that there were fewer options than we would like. So because it's 2020 and everyone's pivoting to do different things they've never done before, we're going to open up a t-shirt store on our website. We're starting with five different designs for this initial run. And the net proceeds 
after the cost of sales will be donated equally to the following charities. Kidsport Burnaby, Burnaby Hospice Society, Burnaby Firefighters Charitable Society, Burnaby Neighborhood House, and Burnaby Hospital Foundation. The store will be live on our site in the next week or so, and our prize winner, winners and guests today will be able to choose the style of their choice. So there's some additional incentive for you to play the quiz games in the breaks. Uh, now onto the future, uh, that great crystal ball. Uh, since the onset of the pandemic, we have been focusing on encouraging day and overnight trips from within the province, but we do hope to be able to market across Canada soon. Like many of us, I'm on several webinars each week trying to divine what the future will hold for inbound visitor traffic to Burnaby. In this next selection, I'll be uh, reviewing the research that is guiding our projections for the coming months. So if you like graphs, stats, charts, buckle up, Keep your fingers on the screenshot button. This is your time, my friends. First, I wanted to share some research that Destination Canada has done. This is fairly broad and is not BC specific, but I felt the data was compelling and I wanted to share this. Now, I'll probably say this a few times, but much of the information shared in these slides is about a month old, which these days feels like a century. So what I'm gonna focus on is the trends rather than the specific numbers. Basically, many Canadians still feel unsafe to leave their homes, let alone travel wild, or widely, or wildly for that matter. As you can see, this data is a month old, but even with the accelerated number of cases lately, Canada seems to be faring better than our neighbors to the south. Our curve shown in red is similar to European countries. So it seems as though the first wave at least has been calmed enough to allow travel between designated areas within our country. Again, we are starting to see spikes abroad, but Canada's response seem to be, seems to be somewhat less effective than some of the Asian and South Pacific countries have seen. So there's definitely still some work to be done on ensuring that our curve remains flat. Based on current modeling, based on the current modeling, the current thinking is that we saw a steeper than forecast drop in the overall economy due to lockdown, but are seeing a fairly quick rebound. With 6% to 8.5% decline in the overall economy predicted for 2020, followed by 5 to 7% recovery next year. Keep in mind that this is the overall economy. As we all know, the tourism economy is much harder hit, and I'm going to address that in a couple of slides from now. So this shows how consumers believe they will be spending post-pandemic. Essentially, it's Maslow's hierarchy of need, food, shelter, followed by safety, and then esteem needs. We can extrapolate from this that people believe they'll have less money and or items will be more expensive post-pandemic. Also, we see spending outlook for travel and transportation do not look positive down there at the bottom. However, there is hope. Canadians spend more on outbound leisure travel than other countries bring into Canada. Keep in mind, this is leisure travel only, not meetings and events or business travel, but nonetheless, if Canadians still want to vacation, the market is sizable enough to help support our industry. Destination Canada had three different scenarios for the return of tourism demand in Canada. In the interest of time, I'm using just the second scenario, but we'll show an overview of all three of them in a few slides from now. This is a busy slide, but overall for the country, the projection shows that if we can capture 12.3 billion of that 27 billion of traditional outbound travel, the industry will see a decline of 43% this year. A far cry from the 7% decline of the overall economy, which we looked at a few slides ago. So the question remains, how long will it take the industry to recover? There are additional variables such as changes in hotel inventory, hotels going out of business, little new inventory, but assuming a cure or treatment for the virus is found and widely distributed by the end of 2021, we see three to five years until we are at the same levels as 2019. In Metro Vancouver, we are fortunate that we lived in a, in a desirable region in an area that has weathered the COVID storm well thus far. 
Metro Vancouver has around 28,000 hotel rooms compared to Boston, which with about 55,000 for a similar size city. Demand and supply will even out here faster than in many parts of the world. I say this because according to STARS or STR's five-year forecast, they do not see a return to 2019 hotel revenues in the U.S. inside their five-year window. I mentioned previously there were three different scenarios presented by Destination Canada, and so we predict the downturn in the overall tourism economy to be between 43% to 61% this year. Challenging doesn't begin to describe the current conditions. Moving ahead to more local research, we can tighten up our focus on the situation in Burnaby. The majority of data is from the Destination BC Signals and Sentiment Dashboard from the Destination BC website. This chart shows the number of arrivals into BC from outside the province in 2019 versus 2020, actual and projected for the balance of the year. Since the onset of COVID, we've seen an average of more than 90% decline in arrivals. So any kind of recovery within 2020 does need to be focused on that in-province travel. Uh, here's a chart showing the hotel average rate and occupancy in the province for the past year and a half. The red arrows show where we were after the first week of stage three versus the same time last year. What this doesn't show is the disparity between urban and rural slash resort areas. Another busy si slide here showing sentiment amongst BC residents regarding whether or not they're willing to travel. We can see that 27% of BC residents intend to travel in the next 12 months. The results have been pretty consistent through the last several weeks. So that demand for travel domestically, we can see is there, where we see a notable drop is willingness to travel to the US in the next 12 months. This is kind of the other side of the same coin. As eager as tourism organizations are to see visitors return to their communities, the residents in some areas may feel differently. These results are from across British Columbia and some communities such as, for instance, Haida Gwaii may be less tolerant of visitors right now than urban areas such as Metro Vancouver. Overall though, we see the closer a traveler is coming from inside the country, the more comfortable a community is with accepting them. We can see from these results that the vast majority of residents would prefer to keep borders closed for the time being. For those willing to travel, it looks as though mid to long haul travel is within the realm of possibility with 71% of British Columbians and 72% of Albertans willing to travel more than two hours for vacation. As I mentioned earlier, initial results are showing a tale of two summers for the BC tourism industry. Destinations like Whistler, Kelowna, Tofino are seeing occupancies and rates that are closer to their norms, whereas Metro Vancouver is seeing occupancies well under 20% for most properties currently compared to 90% plus this time last year. And that is still with many, many hotels yet to reopen since the lockdown. Uh, here's some reporting from CBRE. Uh, my reporting only gives me uh, year to date numbers as of May, but we can see that after a very good January and February for Burnaby, occupancy has fallen by nearly 30% year over year in the first five months and rate has fallen by nearly 50%. I have some reporting here from STAR as well. So STAR Canada's uh, Q2 2020 ho hotel performance report shows that overall Canadian hotel occupancy fell 71.4% in the second quarter of 2020 to 19.4%. ADR declined 36.4% to 106.66 Canadian dollars and RevPAR decreased 81.8% to $20.72. The absolute occupancy and RevPAR levels were the lowest for any quarter in STAR Canada's database. In absolute values, April was the lowest month of the quarter for each of the three metrics, being occupancy, rate, and RevPAR. And the country saw its lowest occupancy level during the week of April 5th to the 11th. Also of note, British Columbia posted the largest drop in daily rate, down 42% year over year for that quarter. Uh, this chart, or sorry, this uh, chart shows travel intentions for the next 12 months for overnight trips. 
So currently our opportunities are to drive leisure travel, which has typically been less than 25% of all visits to Burnaby. As we return to fewer travel re restrictions, we'll see business travel, some sporting events, and eventually some international travelers. We anticipate that group business will be last to recover. However, the demand for meeting space will be very high once there is a cure or adequate treatment to facilitate postponed and canceled events from 2020 and beyond. Unfortunately, I don't have the numbers specific to Burnaby, but for the province, of the estimated 180,000 people working in the visitor economy, 146,000 were laid off by April. Currently, 90,000 of those are at least temporarily employed through the summer, but we're still looking at about 50% of our uh, workforce uh, laid off. To say the coming months will be challenging again is unfortunately an understatement. Now, here I have some Burnaby specific research. Uh, the sample size was a bit small, namely one, namely me. Uh, but I think that this shows there is some pent up demand for travel. As we see each type of travel restriction reduced or eliminated, we will see that develop into both day trips and overnight travel. One of the major concerns expressed across all consumer facing industries that even though demand will return, so much of the labor force has been forced into debt or insolvency as we've navigated through the pandemic. So I just, I wanted to address that as well. Um, what we've actually seen is high ticket leisure item or travel products are setting records in 2020. For many households that have not faced layoffs, or reduced hours, this year has allowed them to save. Savings on gas, childcare, second vehicles, and fewer vacations mean that many individuals and families will have the means and the desire to travel as we can demonstrate that it is safe to do so. So all is not doom and gloom. Many will be impacted and the trickle down effects of the pandemic will be felt for many years, but opportunities have not dried up. Uh, at this point, I'd like to introduce the next set of sessions where you'll have the opportunity to learn a little more and contribute to areas of interest for you. If there are two sessions that you're interested in, don't worry. Uh, they all will be recorded, so you can uh, participate in those later if you like. I'm just going to come back on screen here as we go through and do a bit of sharing. Uh, one of the first sessions uh, that we've got available is uh, Sport Hosting Best Practices, how Kamloops became one of the BC's top sporting, sport, sorry, sport hosting destinations. This will be hosted by Sean Smith. He's the business operations and events supervisor for the city of Kamloops. So that's a fantastic session for those of you that are involved or interested in the uh, sports sector. Uh, our own uh, Seth Lee will be hosting the Exploring the Restart of Meetings and Events. Uh, so great session there with a highlight of industry sector case studies and uh, some general information about the restart of meetings and events. Uh, Ravina and Catherine from our marketing team will be talking about digital collaboration. So this is great whether you have a, a background in marketing or whether you're, you know, you're, it's something you want to know a little bit more about for your organization. Uh, Ravina and Catherine are definitely the ones to go see. And then I'm uh, personally going to be hosting a little uh, panel session called Thinking Outside Our Box. And so, it's, you know, we're very focused inward these days, but we're gonna take a look at so, what uh, some other DMOs are doing. So we've got uh, my colleagues from Tourism Chilliwack, uh, from uh, Burnaby's sister city, Mesa, Arizona. We've got uh, someone from Visit Mesa, and then also from Tourism Prince George. So uh, some really great sessions there. Um, so at this point though, you'll need to choose your next session. So you're gonna need to go to the session section on the side. But before you do that, um, we're gonna play a little game. So you'll wanna go in there, grab your smartphone, find the Kahoot uh, Burnaby Explorer section. The prize for round one will be your choice of one of our brand new tourism Burnaby t-shirts and $50 to spend at Metropolis Metro Town. Uh, in order to play, you'll need to select the sessions button on the left side of your screen and enter one of the Kahoot Burnaby Explorer sessions. So at this point, uh, we're gonna shut down the main stage and uh, we'll uh, send you off to your sessions. Thanks again, everybody. And we'll see you a little bit later on this morning.